Men of Athens, fellow citizens, this is not a trial of Socrates, but of ideas, and of Athens. You are not prosecuting me for any unlawful or impious act against our city or its altars. No evidence of any such sort has been brought against me. You are not prosecuting me for anything I did, but for what I have said and taught. You are threatening me with death because you do not like my views and my teaching. This is a prosecution of ideas, and that is something new in our city's history. In this sense, Athens is on the dock, not Socrates. Each of you, as my judges, is a defendant. Let me be frank. I do not believe in your so-called freedom of speech, but you do. I believe the opinions of ordinary men are only doxa, beliefs without substance, pale shadows of reality, not to be taken seriously, and only likely to lead a city astray. I think it absurd to encourage the free utterance of unfounded or irrational opinions, or to base civic policy on account of heads like cabbages. Hence, I do not believe in democracy. But you do. This is your test, not mine. I believe, and I have often said, that the shoemaker should stick to his last. I do not believe in versatility. I go to a shoemaker for shoes, not for ideas. I believe the man who knows should rule, and the others should, for their own good, follow his prescription, as they do their physicians. I do not claim to know, but at least I know when I do not know. Such men as I, you may call us philosophers or stargazers as you like, are a civic treasure, not a menace, guides to a better way of life. Your freedom of speech is based on the assumption that every man's opinion is of value, and that the many are better guides than the few. But how can you boast of your free speech if you suppress mine? How can you listen to the shoemaker's or the tanner's views when you debate justice in the assembly, but shut me up when I express mine, though my life has been devoted to the search for truth, while you have tended to your own private affairs? You are proud that Athens has been called the school of Elas. Its gates have been opened to philosophers from all over Greece, and even the outer barbarian world. Will you now execute one of your own because suddenly you cannot stand to hear an unpopular opinion? It is not I, but you, that will be disgraced for ever by my condemnation. You accuse me of having been the teacher of Critias and Charmidis, the leaders of the extreme oligarchs under the Thirty. But now you are acting as they did. They summoned me, as you know, and ordered me to cease teaching the Techne Logon, the art of reasoned speech and logical analysis, to those under thirty years of age. You are doing the same thing. You are preparing to sentence me for having taught this techne to the youth of Athens during my lifetime. You say my ideas have been corrupting the youth and leading them to question the democracy. Critias feared I might lead them to question the dictatorship. How then do you differ from the dictator you so recently overthrew? You say that I was Critias's teacher. You are acting as if you had become his pupils. They feared my ideas. So do you, but at least they did not claim to be lovers of free speech. The thirty were arbitrary and did as they pleased. You claim to be men who live by law. Are you not acting the same way? Tell me now. By what law of Athens do you seek to restrict philosophic teaching? Where can I find it among the city's statutes? When was it debated and voted? Who proposed such a monstrosity as you yourselves, in calmer days and in your right minds, would have termed it? The test of truly free speech is not whether what is said or taught conforms to any rule or ruler, few or many. Even under the worst dictator, it is not forbidden to agree with him. It is the freedom to disagree that is freedom of speech. This has been the Athenian rule until now, the pride of our city, the glory on which your orators dwell. Will you turn your backs on it now? You say I have shown disrespect for the city's gods. Beware that you do not make yourselves guilty of that very offence in condemning me. 
How can you honour Pitho when persuasion is inhibited and nonconformist thoughts prosecuted? Are you not disobeying Zeus Agoreos, the very god of debate, when you restrict debate by condemning me? Ideas are not as fragile as men. They cannot be made to drink hemlock. My ideas, and my example, will survive me. But the good name of Athens will wear a stain for ever, if you violate its traditions by convicting me. The shame will be yours, not mine.